Hello, and welcome to the Diabetes Self-Management Program, or DSMP. I'm Steve, and I'll be your facilitator for this workshop over the next six sessions. Normally, this would be an in-person training program, uh, but since we're all here watching this video, we're going to skip over some of the stuff that we normally would, but try and include all the essentials. Before we begin, I'll give a short introduction and some of the ground rules for this program. I want to emphasize that we're all here and watching this because we want to learn how to better manage diabetes. First, it is important to understand that diabetes is a chronic or ongoing condition. This means that there is no cure and we live with it probably for the rest of our lives. The good news is that there are ways to manage diabetes and to prevent or delay serious complications. Even if we have complications, they can often be managed. To do this, it is important to understand that when dealing with any long-term physical or mental health condition, both the health provider's role and ours is different than when treating acute health problems such as the flu or an infection. With acute conditions, the causes, diagnoses, tests, and treatments are usually pretty clear. The health provider chooses what to do and we follow their orders. With chronic or long-term conditions such as diabetes, however, things can be more complicated and uncertain. Chronic conditions also tend to change over time, so the role of the provider becomes one of teacher and advisor while we become partners, responsible for managing our condition on a daily basis and informing the provider of our treatment preferences. There is no one way to manage diabetes. Everyone manages slightly differently. What we will do in this workshop is give you lots of tools for managing your diabetes and help you build and carry out a plan that fits your life. For example, some people may choose to manage through weight loss, others by making diet and exercise changes, and others by using medication. Your healthcare provider will help you determine the strategies you use. Most people will use a combination of these strategies to remain healthy and avoid early complications. Using a combination of strategies seems to be most effective. The important thing is that this is your choice. You can do nothing and you may likely get health problems linked to diabetes, or you can be an active self-manager and be as healthy as you can be. Let's talk about some of the self-management tasks. Self-management tasks. Number one, take care of health condition, such as monitoring our blood sugar, taking medications as prescribed, healthy eating, exercising, getting vaccinations such as flu and pneumonia, being sure we do routine checks of our feet, eyes, and A1C. Keeping informed about our condition, seeking help from healthcare professionals, and voicing our opinions about what is important to us. Taking part in planning our treatment program by monitoring and reporting on our condition, sharing our preferences and goals with the doctor and all other members of the healthcare team, and learning to use online or digital tools to manage our health and communicate with our providers. Number two, carry out normal activities, such as household chores, employment, social life. Doing the things in life that we like and that are important to us. This may mean changing the way we do things. For example, having prepared dinners in the freezer for times we are not feeling up to cooking. Number three, include healthful activities in our daily lives, such as exercise, healthy eating, and if necessary, taking medication. Number four, manage emotional changes. Changes brought about by our illness, such as anger, uncertainty about the future, changed expectations and goals, and sometimes depression. Changes can also happen in our relationships with family and friends. Knowing that there will be emotional ups and downs and that the downs are not pits to crawl out of, but natural ups and downs that we all have in life.
Sometimes there's confusion about the different types of diabetes and what diabetes does to our body. Let's start with the food we eat. Much of the food we eat is changed into glucose, which goes into our blood. We need this glucose for energy. Before our body can use glucose, glucose must enter our cells. However, glucose cannot enter a cell without the help of insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced in the pancreas, a small gland located below and behind the stomach. It helps the cells to take up or absorb the sugar, glucose, so the body can use it as energy. Glucose fuels our bodies much as gasoline fuels a car. The gasoline alone, however, is not enough to make the car run. We need a key to turn on the motor. Only when the car is on can the gasoline be used. In our bodies, glucose alone is not enough. We need a key that allows the glucose to enter the cells to produce energy. This key is insulin. Diabetes occurs when either we do not have enough insulin or the insulin we do have does not work well enough to let glucose enter our cells. In both of these cases, glucose stays in our blood, resulting in high blood glucose or blood sugar. On the other hand, if we do not have enough glucose in our blood, the result is low blood sugar, which is called hypoglycemia. High blood glucose over time can cause high blood pressure, heart disease, kidney disease, and can lead to blindness and foot or leg amputations. Low blood sugar will make you feel weak, shaky, sometimes angry, and can even cause you to faint if very low. In this workshop, we will give you tools to help you balance your blood glucose levels and manage your diabetes. There are two most common types of diabetes. Look briefly at the table on page 287 of Living a Healthy Life. Type 1 diabetes is insulin dependent. This means the person does not produce insulin and must inject insulin every day. In type 2 diabetes, however, the majority of people may produce some insulin and be able to manage their diabetes with diet and exercise and or oral medications. Insulin may or may not be needed. About 95% of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. There is another type of diabetes called gestational diabetes that develops in some women when they are pregnant. Many times this diabetes will go away after pregnancy and other times it does not. Women who develop gestational diabetes or who have any of the other types of diabetes and become pregnant need to work closely with their healthcare providers to assure a healthy mother and baby. Some people have been told they have prediabetes or are at risk for diabetes. The line between prediabetes and diabetes is not rigid and depends on many things. If someone has been told they have prediabetes or diabetes, all the things in this workshop would be helpful. All of us who have prediabetes or diabetes need to manage our blood sugar. Caring for our diabetes can seem overwhelming, especially at first. In this workshop, we will learn the tools to become more involved in our care and better at managing diabetes.